Hi, I'm Laura Mize, pediatric speech language pathologist, and welcome to Creating Verbal Routines from TeachMeToTalk.com and MyEI2.com. In this therapy guide, I want to teach you how to establish verbal routines for toddlers and young preschoolers with language delays. First of all, let's review the definition of verbal routines. Verbal routines are those words that are repeated at a predictable time during an activity. When I'm explaining this to parents, I say that a verbal routine occurs when a person says the same words in the same way for the same things every day or every time a specific context occurs. Think about how you may already use verbal routines. For example, when you're getting ready to play a running game, most of us instinctively count one, two, three. Or if you're getting ready to play with toys here like my race cars, you probably say, ready, set, go, before you roll the cars across the floor. These are popular verbal routines that most of us use without even thinking about it. What happens then with a child over time? When we pause as we're using this familiar start to a favorite activity, many children begin to finish what we say with little additional teaching or prompting. In addition to those kinds of well-known phrases, verbal routines can also come from traditional nursery rhymes, games, or songs. For example, when a parent sings the same song night after night at bedtime, that becomes a verbal routine. The child begins to recognize and then anticipate the words to the song when his mom or dad begin to sing. Verbal routines are important in this way because they help a child understand what events and what words come next. Effective preschool and kindergarten teachers use this technique as they sing the same songs to accompany the routines in their school day. The children hear the song and then they move on to the new activity. The event becomes predictable because of the words that we're using. Television shows certainly understand the importance of predictability with young children. In fact, you probably already use verbal routines that you learned from these shows too. I don't know a therapist or a preschool teacher who doesn't sing the clean up, clean up song that they learned from Barney many, many times a day. In addition to well-known songs and phrases, verbal routines can also be completely original scripts that you yourself make up to accompany play routines. In therapy sessions, do you ever make up a little song or a game to fit something that's happened with a child? The child likes it so much that you do it again and again several times in a row. The next time you see the same child, something might happen to remind you of your verbal routine or your game and you sing it or you play it again. You've created your own original verbal routine. The routine sticks so that you do it time and time again with that child. After a while, don't you find yourself then trying to use the same verbal routine with another child because it works so well with the first one? That's your own original verbal routine. There are other times that you've probably used an original but less structured verbal routine to target both receptive and expressive language without giving it too much thought. For example, when you play with a baby doll and when you are um, putting the, the spoon to the baby doll's mouth, you're probably saying something like, baby eats, mmm, mmm, mmm. You're not only providing a model for what eat means as you put that spoon to the baby doll's mouth, but you're giving that child something to imitate as you say, mm, mm, mm. The next time you play with dolls, I bet you're doing the same thing without giving it much thought. That's your own verbal routine. After the child hears the same verbal routine over and over again, the words become automatic, meaning that a child understands and then begins to say the word as the routine occurs. It's the repetitiveness and the predictability of your verbal routines that will expedite a child's comprehension and eventually it facilitates those early word attempts during a familiar activity. The repetitiveness and the predictability of your verbal routines will be particularly appealing to our little clients with autism. So many of those children crave and thrive with order and routine. So creating verbal routines may be our best treatment strategy to help those kids begin to use words. 
Sometimes parents and even therapists miss the value of using a verbal routine thinking that they need to change what they say in order to introduce new vocabulary to a child with language delays. While this is important for older preschoolers or school-age children, the opposite is true for toddlers who are late talkers. They need the same words in the same way at the same time in order to learn to understand and then say words. Purposefully creating verbal routines during therapy sessions and then teaching parents how to use verbal routines at home are very successful strategies for treating all young children with language delays and disorders. Verbal routines certainly qualify as evidence-based practice. You'll find several authors and researchers listed on the last page of your written therapy guide. Now that I've explained what verbal routines are and highlighted why they're important, let's learn how we can really use these in sessions and at home with late talking toddlers. In her great book, Giggle Time, Susan Odd Saunders states that using a predictable sequence of words in play increases a child's staying power, his ability to want to stay with you and interact with you over longer periods of time. Once a child stays with you consistently, it's more likely that he'll begin to expect and then imitate those same words. I want to give you some guidelines for establishing these kinds of predictable verbal routines to use in sessions if you're a therapist or at home if you're a parent. You'll want to select enticing, simple, high frequency words and then use them predictably each time you engage in an activity. In real life terms, as you're training parents, if you're a therapist, you'll remind them to pick a few words or short phrases to use in the same way for the same activity each time you play. Now beyond remembering to use the same words in the same way for the same activities, the main thing that's required for a verbal routine to be established is time. The child has to hear the verbal routine often enough to recognize it and then remember it. It's extremely rare when a late talking toddler joins in a verbal routine during the first few occasions he hears it. Repetition is critical. A child must hear the verbal routine again and again and again before it's realistic to expect him to say those words himself. The last piece of learning to use verbal routines effectively is pausing. This will give a child a chance to fill in the word that comes next. As you pause, you'll also use your own body language to indicate to the child that it's his turn to talk. This means that you're going to lean forward and you're going to make your face and your whole body anticipatory, which means that you're waiting for the child to complete what you've started. I have some great video clips to demonstrate uh, this technique in a few minutes so that you can see all of these things in action. Verbal routines can be so effective for late talkers. I have learned this over and over again in my own practice. Once a child is verbal enough, and once he's heard that routine long enough, he will join in. Building on what our brains expects to hear can be very, very powerful for late talkers. Remember that verbal routines can be developed for any toy or any activity that includes a set of predictable actions. One thing that can be very predictable in sessions is how we begin and end play with toys. When I'm beginning and ending play, no matter what specific toy we're using, I always follow the same verbal routines. Let me give you a couple of examples. To begin each play routine, I place all of my toys in giant two and a half gallon Ziploc bags. This allows the child to see what's inside, but he has to request the items before we begin to play. Now, after the child has picked what he wants to play, and then he's already requested the activity, I launch into my verbal routine. Now, I'm going to model how I do this, and again, this is a little unnatural because we don't have a child here, but I, I don't even think I can say these words any other way. So let me just kind of show you what I do with this. I'll say something to the child and present the bag and say, let's zip. And as the child is unzipping the bag, I say, zip. 
And then when we're opening the bag, I model and cue the child by signing and saying, open. Now, it's not just the words you say that are important, but it's how you say the words. You're going to elongate both of those words as the child performs the action. You won't just say, zip open you know like you might say to an adult but you have to really again say zip and open using that sing song prosody helps many children begin to imitate the words since you're playing with several different toys in one therapy session you'll be using this verbal routine many many times each session the repetition during the verbal routine is what will be effective for beginning any play with a toy. Now let's move on to talk about verbal routines during play. During activities, no matter what toy you're playing with, you can create some verbal routines. One way to do this during play is with holistic phrases. Holistic phrases are phrases that a child learns as one long word. Most of the time, these phrases are used to convey increased emotion. These kinds of phrases can be used throughout play, no matter what specific toy that you're using. Examples of common holistic phrases are, where'd it go, or here you go, there it is, right here, right there, or no way. You'll say these kinds of things anytime it fits during play. For example, if a toy breaks, you might say, oh no, or oh man. So it wouldn't matter what's really happening. When you complete a difficult action in play, you can celebrate, lift up your arms and say, I did it. Or when you reach out and grab a toy, you can grab it and say, I got it. These kinds of phrases are so much fun for young children and they can easily become verbal routines during play, no matter what toy you're using. There are some additional examples of holistic phrases listed in your written therapy guide and later you'll see some really cute video clips of these kinds of verbal routines during play. Let's move on to talk about using verbal routines to end play. To end each play routine in a therapy session, I try very hard, especially when I first begin to work with a child, to establish cleaning up as the way to end every therapy task. Now, any song or chant will serve this purpose as long as you're consistent and the child begins to know what to expect. I've already mentioned that well-known clean up, clean up song from the Barney Show. I also like this little bye-bye song, which is great for teaching a child to wave bye-bye and then to learn to say the words bye-bye. Now, the words to the song are in your written therapy guide, but I'll sing it now since you may not know it. So let's pretend we're playing with babies and I would sing, bye-bye baby, bye-bye. Bye bye baby, bye bye baby, it's time to say bye bye. So then if we were cleaning up cars, we would sing bye bye cars. Or if we were cleaning up blocks, we would sing bye bye blocks. It doesn't matter what the toy is, we're singing the same song. You'll see a really cute video clip of that song in a few minutes as well. Now verbal routines may also help with comprehension for a child who has receptive language delays. Parents can especially incorporate verbal routines at home during almost any daily event. For example, a child may learn body parts a little more quickly if his parents devise a verbal routine during bath time, such as saying, what will we wash next? Oh, wash your belly. Wash, 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 wash. What will we wash next? Oh, let's wash your toes. Wash, 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 wash. What will we wash next? Let's wash your arm. Wash, 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 wash. Verbal routines can also support transitions between activities. Now, teachers use this strategy all day long in their classrooms, and we can use this same technique even when we're working with toddlers in a therapy session or at home. A verbal routine can warn a child of an upcoming switch in the schedule. For example, as a therapist, you can sing a song to signal what comes next. When I ran a playgroup program many years ago, we sang a song to indicate that we were getting ready to move from playtime to snack time. Now, I'll sing it for you so that you'll know the tune. We sang, do you know what time it is, what time it is, what time it is, do you know what time it is, it's snack time time. Now since that, that time I've used that same song in sessions with individual children or in homes with groups of children or groups of siblings. 
You can modify that song to fill in uh, the name of any event at the end. You could sing lunchtime or bath time or even bedtime. Let's uh, talk about difficulty with transitions. Many children with language delays have difficulty moving from one task to the next in therapy sessions, but parents really see difficulty with transitions at home. A child who has difficulty with transitions may not want to come inside or go to the kitchen for a meal or turn off the TV to take a bath. Establishing a verbal routine may make an unpleasant task a little easier at home. Help parents create some transition songs for a child who needs help moving to less fun activities. For example, when a child dislikes toothbrushing, you could sing, and again, this is to the tune of Farmer in the Dell. It's time to brush your teeth. It's time to brush your teeth. We had some fun and played today. It's time to brush your teeth. You, again, you can change those words to fit whatever you need. You know, you could sing, it's time to go inside. It's time to go inside. And again, make that song fit what you're, what you're needing it for. If a child doesn't like to put on socks or shoes, you could try this one, and this is to the tune of here we go around the mulberry bush. This is the way we put on socks, put on socks, put on socks. This is the way we put on socks early in the morning. And again, adapt the songs to virtually any daily routine. You could also make up your own silly song or create a chant to solve these kinds of problems with transitions and sessions, and especially those transition problems at home for families. You may also want to get really creative and use movement to accompany your verbal routine. For example, for a child who doesn't want to come inside or doesn't want to leave one area uh, to go on to the next area, you could play giants and you could say something like stomp, 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 giant, stomp, 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 giant as you take giant steps toward the door. A more uh, traditional song-like verbal routine that I use for this kind of transition in sessions is the marching marching song. You're going to lead a child to where you want him to go as you sing the song. Now, to the, the words to that song are in your written therapy guide, but let me sing it so you'll know the tune. It's marching, 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 hop, 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 running, 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 now we stop. And again, you're performing those actions as you sing the song. In creating these kinds of verbal routines, you'll think about what would work based on what a child likes and what your purpose is for the song for that child. And then you create a verbal routine around that. And it's gotta be fun for everyone. That means fun for the child and fun for you. As therapists, we need to model these kinds of verbal routines and sessions and then teach parents how to do this at home. All of the little songs that I just sang for you are in your written therapy guide. And I hope that you'll use these to make transitions for uh, easier for the young children on your caseloads. Next, we're going to talk about how verbal routines help a child learn new words and then generalize that language to new situations and contexts. Remember that our main strategy here is repetition. For example, one of my favorite songs to sing when I'm playing with any kind of farm-related activity is Animals on the Farm. The pattern of this song is so simple and it's very repetitive, making it easier for a child to join in and try to sing. Now again, all of the singing that I'm doing in the production may seem a little unnatural because I don't have a child here, but I want you to hear how it would sound in real life so that you have a great example of how to do it during your interactions with a toddler. So I would take my cow and I would say something like, ooh, it's, it's a cow, let's sing, let's sing that song. Cows on the farm say moo, 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 moo. Moo, 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 cows on the farm say moo, moo, moo all day long. <laughs> the key words in that verbal routine are so simple. The animal's name and the animal's sound. Repetitiveness will allow the child to jump in when he can. Now when you sing a song like this consistently, a child can anticipate the words and predict what word or what sound comes next. Over time, he is going to join us and try to sing or say, moo, moo, moo. Now many children do begin to say that word in the context of the song long before they're going to be able to answer a question like, you know, what's this or what sound does a cow make? 
You're going to use your verbal routines to help a child first learn to understand and then say these early kinds of words. Now how we make sure that a child is generalizing these new words is to get very, very purposeful about repetition with our verbal routines. Let's talk about how this looks in therapy sessions over several weeks. So let's say I'm with a child and we're playing with our Fisher Price farm set. The child will have the cow and I'm going to introduce my song and sing it three or four times just as we're playing with the cow. So in the same session, let's say that we move to a part, a different part of the therapy room. I have these great uh, pans on my wall that are magnets. And so if a child is over there and we see the cow, I'm going to say, wow, it's a cow. Let's sing that song. And then I'm going to begin to sing our same cows on the farm song. Then next week in our session, uh, if there's another cow in another toy with a shape sorter, I'm going to sing that same song. I would present the cow and I would say something like, oh, it's a cow. Look, cow. Do you remember? We sang about cows last time. Let's sing our song. And then I'm going to sing cows on the farm. And let's say in that same session, we read moo ba la la la. And so we're going to see the cow and I'm going to say, Look, it's a cow. <gasps> Let's sing our song. And again, I, the next week I might have a puzzle <laughs> that has a cow. And we're going to do the same thing. So in every session for several weeks, I may not be using the exact same cow toy, but I'm purposefully going to plan to include toys or an activity to make sure that a child is generalizing language and verbal routines really help us do that. Now, of course, this song can be used with other animals as well. So you'll sing the same song to introduce another animal. You might sing about ducks or about pigs. But let me caution you, for most toddlers with language delays, you can't teach 15 <laughs> different animals at a time. Pick a few, say three or four, that a child seems to like and focus on those for a while. Or you may pick what new animals you teach based on what consonant or vowel sounds that you've heard a child use, and you'll pick those words. For example, if a child has a good M, a decent M sound for me, I might think, gosh, I should try to get meow for a cat because he's got that M. Or I might even get ba for sheep again, or bok, bok, bok for a chicken because he may be able to do another bilabial sound. Now, for those of you who are not speech language pathologists, bilabial sounds are those sounds that we make with both of our lips. So I'm going to maybe think about that when I'm, when I'm thinking, what animal should I introduce uh, next? If a kid has a pretty good D, if I hear him say dada, I might think, gosh, I should move to duck or I might you know, use a dog. Again, it's based on what sound he can say. Now, if you're a parent, <laughs> this may be a new way for you to think about the words that you pick to introduce to your late talker. But let me caution you, don't overthink this. Eventually, we have to introduce all sounds in all words uh, to toddlers, so don't get all hung up on that right now. To summarize, verbal routines and using those with a child are a great way to help a child not only begin to learn new words, but to begin to generalize those words to new activities. You'll want to be sure that your key words in the routine are simple, and then you'll plan lots of opportunities to use those same verbal routines over and over again every day or from week to week. The predictability and the repetitiveness will allow that child an opportunity to jump in when he's ready. Instead of telling you any more about how to implement verbal routines in play, I want to show you some great therapy clips when I've used verbal routines during speech therapy sessions. I want to make sure that you understand how to introduce the verbal routine and then continue to use the verbal routines when working with a real life, very young child. As I've already told you, I like to establish verbal routines with many of my favorite toys. Because the sequence of events with the toy is predictable, my language should be predictable too, so that a child first learns to perform each of the actions with the toys and then adds the words. 
One of my favorite toys to use is this flat ball. Now this ball is really cool and I'm going to show you how it works. It can be pushed flat and then after a few seconds it opens and uh, pops up on its own. My standard routine for this toy, and again I'm going to do it so I can show you exactly how it looks, and I say this these exact words every single time. So I say ball, woo, push, wait, wait, pop. And again, I repeat the same words each time I play, no matter which kid I'm working with or where I am. Now, when you get super consistent like this, guess what? Your little clients get more consistent too with their own word attempts. Watch this clip with uh, me playing with my little friend. Now, his mom and I are both using the verbal routine with our flat ball. Did you notice that he was not saying any real words yet during the verbal routine, but he had learned the routine and he certainly anticipated what would happen next. He certainly knew that screaming yay at the end with clapping was supposed to come there even though he wasn't even saying the word yay yet. He was purposefully verbalizing with us as we did the routine and that is a great start. When we're using verbal routines with a toy or with a game that we invent, it's really important to remember what you've said so that you can repeat the same words the same time the next time you play. Sometimes this begins as just a sound uh, that you might make with a child during a game. Watch here as I play with my little friend and we are in the ball pit. Now he's not using any words yet, but he certainly understands our game and his part is to join in with the sound that I'm making. Um, is it to say, you know, you have to do this or you have to do this. And lo and behold, they do get it. Okay. You know, <laughs> But when it's kind of hard, it's very easy for them to just be And we see kids do that all And until you kind of dig your heels in and the whole team digs their heels in, you gotta, you know. Okay, okay. Oh boy, no. We've already talked about how common it is to use the verbal routine, ready, set, go. I want to show you how frequently you may have to model this verbal routine in play to get these words going with late talking toddlers. You can't just say it once or twice and expect a child to know how to join in. Watch how I set up this play routine with my little friends and then listen for how many opportunities I give them to join me as we're playing with race cars. Ready, set, did you say go? Ready, set, go! That's funny. 
Ready, set, say go. You guys say it. Ready, a one, two, three, go! Boom! Yay! Yay, go! Oh, get the trucks, get the cars. Let's do it again. Again, again. Oh, you want the car ready? Set, go! Boom! <laughs> yeah, go get them! Get the cars, get the trucks! Come on, come on, come on! Let's get them! So we can race! Car! Got car! Car! Truck! Come on, let's race! Come on, come on, car! Car, I heard you. Ready? I heard you go, ready? Set. Set. Say go. Say go. Ready? Ready? Set. In this next video clip, I'm playing with my little friend as we make a character climb up on the couch and then jump off. Now, we have played this game many, many times with many different toys and therapy sessions, so he certainly knows the game and knows what to say. Listen for the key words in our verbal routine and notice as he starts to join in himself uh, with some of the words. We're going to make him climb we develop verbal routines that are so long that they seem more like games to use during play. Now I play the night-night game with a variety of toys. I'm going to show you how I would play it here with my Elmo toy. And again, no matter what toy I'm using, my script is the same. So I would say, oh Elmo, Elmo wants to go night-night. Look, he's going night-night. Tell me. Shh. Pat, 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 pat. Night, 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 Elmo. Shh. Oh, is it time to wake up? Want to wake him up? Let's count. One, two, three. Wake up, wake up, wake up, Elmo. And so again, it wouldn't matter if I were playing with Elmo or baby dolls or a dog, whatever. We would use the same verbal routine. I want to show you how I've adapted that or how my little friend adapted that, even to use with a toy that may be a little uh, non-traditional. He's going to do the night-night game with trains. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You don't want them on there? Or what are they doing? Night-night? They're going night-night? Can you pat them? Oh, shh. Pat. Very good. Pat. 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 Night-night. You're going to wake them up? You're going to wake them up? One. Two, three, wake up, wake up, <laughs> wake up, choo choos, wake up, wake up, choo choos. Oh, they're going night night? Okay, tell them. Shh, that's right. Shh, shh, shh. Pat them, pat, pat, pat. 
choo-choos. I see they're sleeping. Can you pat them? Pat, pat, pat. Pat your choo-choos. Wait a minute. You better pat them. Pat, 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 pat. I know. Are we going to wake them up? One. Two. <laughs> Not yet. One, two, three. Another fun verbal routine is a calling game that can be adapted for lots of toys. In this routine, something is hidden and then we call for whatever is missing. I usually do this by putting my hands on either side of my mouth and then I yell the name of whatever we're looking for and then say something like, where are you? Here's my little friend as we hide plastic animals in his shorts. Remember, if you're a therapist, that you can use these same verbal routines and same strategies from child to child and again with different toys. Now, here's another little friend, and we're playing the same calling game, but with a different toy, Frog in the Box. Oh, okay. Should we close? Yeah. Close. Oh, what do we say? What do we say? Froggy! Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Good. Should we open? Good. Tell Laura, open, please. please. Good. Open. Open, please. Open, please. You do it. Here we go. Here we go. Boom! <laughs> oh, yay! Oh, you're going to show Daddy. Can he hop? You ready? You're gonna call him? Henry. Froggy! <laughs> Where are you? You can even do this verbal routine with people. Here's my little friend as he learns to call his sister using this same verbal routine. Okay, I see you. Thank you, Maya. I don't have him in the shop Thank now you. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's do it anyway. Okay. Laura, you're gonna get me in it? No. 
Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. No, I meant just Julia. I got you. Repetition is so important for a verbal routine to be successful. Make sure that you're looking for new ways to incorporate the same verbal routine from activity to activity or even within the same activity. Here I am with my little friends and we're singing the This Is The Way We song like I sang earlier and let me show you how I can sing that same song but alter it uh, within the same activity just using different toys. Wash the plate. I'm gonna wash the plate. This is the way we wash the plate. Wash the plate. Wash the plate. Wash your dishes. Wash the plate. This is the way we wash the plate. Early in the morning. Wash, wash, wash. Oh, you are washing. Wash, wash, wash. This is the way we wash the plate. Wow, are you gonna wash your hands? This is the way we wash our hands. Wash our hands, wash our hands. This is the way we wash our hands early in the morning. Wash, wash, wash. That's funny. I'm gonna wash the plate. I'm gonna wash a bowl. Which one? That bowl? Okay. This is the oh, plate. Okay. We're gonna wash the plate. What? What? You want some more? Julia, what do you want? I want a You want a, you want the board? Yeah. <laughs> she didn't say that, did she? You want some more dishes. You want some dishes? Are we washing the dishes? <laughs> this no, the don't put it in your mouth. This is the way we wash the dishes. Wash the dishes. Wash the dishes. This is the way we wash the dishes early in the morning. Wash, oh wash, wash. Are you washing your dishes? Don't put it in your mouth. Wash. Oh, you put it on the you put the orange on your plate. Hey, look, it's Cookie Monster. Want to eat it? Eat, eat, eat. Yum, 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 yum. Eat. Cookie Monster eats an orange. That's funny. Oh, wash. You're washing his mouth. Oh, you want to wash him? Wash, wash, wash. Wash, 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 wash. Let's wash his belly. This is the way we wash his belly. Wash his belly. Wash his belly. <laughs> this is the way we wash his belly early in the morning. Wash, wash, wash. That's funny. Can we wash his backpack? Backpack, I heard you. Let's wash his backpack. This is the way we wash his backpack. Wash the backpack. Wash the backpack. Wash. This is the way we wash the backpack early in the morning. Maybe wash. For a song like that, you'll be sure to tell a parent to sing it at home and give them some really specific ideas. For example, I would say to the mom of the little girls that I just showed you, they loved that washing song today. So I want you to sing that this week in the bathtub and I want you to sing it when you're cleaning up at home. You can sing it when you're washing off the table after a meal or even when you guys are washing your hands in the bathroom. When you give parents really specific suggestions like that, carryover becomes a lot easier. The most powerful part of this strategy is that after you model a verbal routine many, many times of the child, you'll implement what we call the completion method. I want to show you several clips of one little friend so that you can see this whole entire process in a single session. Now this little guy is three and he came to me a couple of months ago and he had never seen a speech pathologist before. His parents reported that he could talk. He used 40 to 50 words, but only as labels and only in an activity like reading a book. He does not use words to interact with others and certainly not during play. Now the beginning point for therapy with a child like this is to teach him to 
use words to talk as he's playing and as he's interacting with others. Verbal routines work so well for this kind of activity with this kind of child. Now in this clip we're going to be playing with the balloon and again this was the first time that he had ever played with the balloon as well. So I'm going to show you this whole play routine from start to finish. Now remember that he never really used words with people so this is what we're going to start with um, during our uh, therapy and I'm going to show you the verbal routine that I use to get this kind of language going. Blow. Blow. Oh, here we go. One, two, three, go! Wow, wow. balloon, balloon, more. You want more? Yeah. You want more? ready, set, go with the balloon. We want to make sure that we can help him generalize those words to other activities. So in this same session, right after we finished playing with the balloons, we started playing with something else. I'm going to show you ready, set, go now with rockets. Rock. 
When a child obviously loves this kind of predictability, use verbal routines to engage that child in any kind of new play. For our little friends who are sensory seekers, we can also adapt verbal routines to hook their attention and then help them move on to things they've never done before. Here's my little friend again, and I'm using verbal routines to help him participate and stay with a new kind of activity with a new kind of toy. Oh,
Set it up. You can also use songs in the same way. This means that you'll sing the beginning part of the song and then you'll pause for the child to fill in or complete the line or the words that come next. For example, you'll play a game like Ring Around the Rosy several times with the child. Now, after a few turns, you'll want to pause to see if the child can complete the last word of the last line of the song. Now, to build anticipation, you're going to very slowly and very deliberately sing that last line. You know, ashes, ashes, we all fall. And again, you're creating that anticipation there. You're going to look at the child expectantly, lean forward to demonstrate that he should fill in that last word, which is down. Now, if a child doesn't pop that word out, say it yourself, but repeat the verbal routine again a few times using that same very deliberate pacing and deliberate body language to suggest to a child that it is his turn to sing or to say that last word. Now, watch how this worked so well again uh, with this same little guy in the same session. lots of other songs in this same way. Let me show you some of my favorites and how I introduce those in therapy sessions. Now remember, this does not always go as smoothly as we would like with real children in real therapy sessions. Therapy, after all, is real life. So again, sometimes it's not as seamless as we like, but I wanna show you how to keep going even when it's not so easy. Horsey. Can we play horsey? Ooh. You wanna ride a little horsey? Do it on Mama. Get your words out, Marie. Okay. Put your words out. <laughs> Do it on you. Turn around and face you. Look, you're gonna play with Mama. 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 All right. Get your feet ready. All right, here we go. Ride a little horsey to tail. Watch out, Clayton. Don't fall down. Let it go all the way through. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ha! 
If he's heard it enough, he's going to want to do it. Oh, let's row, row your boat. Ready? Oh. Let's row, row. Yeah. Oh, you ready? Set. Go. Row, row, uh. row your boat gently down the street. <laughs> merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Clayton, if you see an alligator, close your eyes. Green. Ah! Whoa! <laughs> More? Row, row. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Ooh! Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Clayton, if you see an alligator, close your eyes and scream. Ah! Whoa. <laughs> if you see an alligator, close your eyes and scream. Ah! <laughs> you can also use verbal routines to help a child calm down and rejoin you when he's having a hard time staying with you or wanting to run away to do his own thing. Watch how we brought a little guy back to us and had him want to play with us with a verbal routine. Falling down, falling down, falling down, London. <laughs> Repetitive books can also be a great tool for using verbal routines. One of my favorite books for using this strategy is Brown Bear, Brown Bear. Now remember that you'll teach the verbal routine by saying the words over and over again as you read the book together. Once the child has heard the routine or the book enough, you'll begin to pause to see if the child can fill in the last line by herself. Now the target word in brown bear, brown bear is me, and it's the ending line for every single page. You can even use the sign for me, which is patting your chest, and that eventually will help you get to the word. Watch my little friend here. Looking at me. <laughs> Good girl. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? Looking at me. Oh, bye bye, Doug. Bye. 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 Okay. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse. <laughs> Looking at You want to turn the page? Turn the page. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog. 
Earlier, I mentioned that holistic phrases can be inserted during almost any play activity as a verbal routine. Holistic phrases are fun and they're powerful because they convey so much meaning and emotion for young children. Watch here as my little friend begins to imitate holistic phrases during play. you've learned some new things from the therapy clips and are already thinking about ways that you can use verbal routines with young children. Let me leave you with some final troubleshooting tips. Remember it takes time to establish a verbal routine. You'll have to say the same words and lines over and over many, many times before you can reasonably expect that a child would recognize, remember, and then be able to join in that verbal routine. Sometimes changing the pace of your verbal routines can make it much more likely that a child will join in and start to verbalize. For some children, this means that you need to be even more animated and anticipatory and excited with your body language and your facial expressions and pick up that pace a little bit so the kid wants to do what you're doing. Increasing your own intensity level can help a child rev it up enough to begin to pop out real words during your verbal routines. For other children who are on the opposite end of the spectrum, you may need to slow it down a little bit or even a lot. It could be that in your own effort to be animated and be really fun, you're going too fast. You have to purposefully reduce your speaking rate while still staying emotionally on and still staying fun. Keep your energy level up, but slow down and pause for longer periods of time as you're saying those verbal routines. If you've introduced several verbal routines with a child who's had no success over a period of time, you may have to reduce the number of verbal routines that you're using. Focus on just a few and then repeatedly work those into your interactions with that kind of child. Now sometimes a child's language comprehension or his ability to process language can't keep up with all the words in a really long verbal routine. This is often the case when a child seems to shut down or walk away or avoid you during an activity that you think that he would otherwise enjoy. If this is the case, look for ways to modify the routine. So instead of singing all the different verses or all the words in a song, simplify it so that you're just using a few keywords and repeat those. Make it similar but easier. My uh, example earlier, the Animals on the Farm song, would be so much more applicable here for um, a kid like this rather than singing Old MacDonald. Now one final word of caution about implementing verbal routines is to make sure that a child isn't just imitating your words within a verbal routine without much other evidence of language comprehension. Saying words without understanding what they mean is called echolalia. I'd much rather a child be less verbal and understand more words than talk a blue streak without any evidence of language comprehension. Some children, especially those on the autism spectrum, are at risk for this. And they do seem to be, have to be able to say a word before they understand it. But please be extremely careful that you are, when you're using your verbal routines, that you are also supporting functional gains in language comprehension, not just rote memorization and not just imitation of the words uh, in your verbal routine without understanding. Great things happen when you begin to purposefully decide to implement verbal routines 
during familiar play activities with young children with language delays. Creating your own verbal routines may take some mental discipline to get started, but once you do, those words become automatic to you, and you're gonna launch into your verbal routines without much thought in a therapy session. I hope that you're also amazed to see how your little friends do this too. They'll improve both their receptive and their expressive language skills. That's all for this therapy guide. Be sure to take a look at your written therapy summary for other information and for additional resources. I'm Laura Mize, pediatric speech-language pathologist. Please check out my other therapy guides from teachmetotalk.com and myei2.com. Thanks so much. <laughs>